Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, some stuff. Starting off the news this week, it's a hat trick for Venus, as this week a study was published in the journal PNAS that looked at the geological activity of the planet. They have discovered evidence that Venus, similar to Earth, has tectonic deformation and movement on the interior of the planet, which in turn affects the planet's surface. The movement of these pieces of Venus have been compared to the movement of pack ice in the polar regions of our own planet. It's worth noting that very little is actually known about what this means for Venus, although there are theories that the study presents, which you can check out in the sources link we always have down below. In other news, LEGO has announced plans to start using recycled bottles in their sets within the next couple of years. LEGO have said that the process isn't simple and it is going to take some time to create and test bricks made from recycled material until they are of the same quality as normal LEGO bricks. LEGO's Vice President of Sustainability has called it a super fun challenge. The plastic they will be using will be imported from the US, and LEGO have said that unfortunately it would be impossible to use plastic taken from the ocean, as they would have degraded too much. LEGO have previously pledged to make all of its core products from sustainable materials by the end of the decade. And now over to Ben, who will show some very interesting things about giant spiders. Thanks, Doug. Also in the news has been an interesting development to the Oculodentavis saga. As many of you may remember, I did do a whole video on it last year, Oculodentavis was named based on an incredibly preserved head trapped in Cretaceous-aged amber and described as a bizarre, tiny avian dinosaur, the smallest recorded. However, this was a very controversial publication as, firstly, it turned out that the animal had likely been misidentified and was probably a lizard, not a bird, and secondly, the fact that trade in amber from Myanmar is linked to all sorts of horrific crimes against humanity. For more details on all this, you can see my video on the topic, but this new development is a paper that was published last week, although we missed it, and describes a new species of Oculodentavis based on a well-preserved skull and part of the front of the postcranial skeleton. The new study further confirms that this was indeed a lizard and not a bird, as the skull shape seems to have convergently evolved certain features with birds. It's another fascinating addition to this story and further shows how important fossils from Myanmar are, but also how damaging to human life their trade can be. In other news, a new species of the famous giant prehistoric rhinoceros Paraceratherium has been named. Called Paraceratherium... uh, yeah, that. This new taxon was discovered in northwestern China and comes from rocks dating to 26.5 million years ago, and an analysis of its evolutionary placement within the genus has resulted in the paleontologist realising it was a highly derived member. Additionally, the paper reconstructs a history of how this animal dispersed over time based on the locations of various species' fossils finding that in the early Oligocene epoch, one species dispersed to the west into Kazakhstan, a descendant lineage of which then gave rise to a different species that spread into South Asia. Then, in the later Oligocene, Paraceratherium returned to the north again, giving rise to another species in Kazakhstan and the newly discovered species in China. It's a brilliant discovery and a great investigation of paleobiogeographical distribution for a truly fascinating extinct animal. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope everyone's doing well and we'll see you next week. Did he give you anything? Yeah, uh, nothing much, but that's all we've got, so. So, we work with it. It's not like we've got a choice. <laughs>